Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. So today I have some news on the Unity front. Unity 2018.2 has just been released. Uh, it's fully out of beta, uh, though a lot of the features are still actually in preview mode. So the meaning of beta is getting a bit more blurred when we're talking about Unity. And if you saw Unity 2018.1's release, you might have been wowed by all the new stuff in there. There was the lightweight render pipeline, the high def render pipeline, uh, the new entity component system, the job system, and all that stuff. The new shader, a visual shader programming language. Uh, just an astounding amount of stuff was added to 2018.1. Don't expect that with 2018.2. Instead, what's happened here is basically refinement. What we've got is more or less, uh, let's say 2018.1++. What they've done is gone through pretty much all aspects of the 2018.1 uh, release and incremented on them, made them a little bit better, made them... Um, you know, just a little bit more polished, a little bit more feature complete, etc. So we're going to jump through and take a look at the new functionality in this release. Now, of course, I will link this link down below. Uh, so you have um, the same material we're going through right now. It's from the uh, Unity blog. Uh, but basically what we've got here, again, is the general theme of improvements. Um, you can go, let's go down here to the, the main part of the list. Uh, the big thing is improvements on the scriptable render pipeline. Now, if you don't know about it already, the script, scriptable render pipeline is the new um, low and high def version. Basically, now you can program the graphic pipeline in Unity. Using C-sharp code, you can create your own pipelines. And they provided two, one for fast games on limited hardware and one that's basically trying to compete with Unreal Engine for graphics fidelity. And they're doing it. It actually looks a whole lot better when you use the high def rendering pipeline. So what we're seeing here is um, SRP Batcher, uh, basically some um, performance improvements there in the way things are done. Uh, there, you can now strip out um, shader variants. I think this is basically if you're not using certain aspects of shaders, it can be stripped out, make your build smaller and faster. Uh, lightweight render pipeline here. Uh, we've got performance improvements going on. So uh, with optimized tile utilization, Blah, 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 blah. High def rendering pipeline. That's the high fidelity one that's trying to compete with the likes of Unreal Engine for fidelity. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of new functionality. Improvements include volumetrics, glossy planar reflection, uh, geometric specular uh, AA or anti-aliasing, uh, proxy screen space reflection and refraction, mesh, mesh decals, and shadow mask. And then there's a bit of an explanation of what all of those things individually are. Now, that's one of those nice things that you're going to see uh, with the new render pipelines is they should be able to iterate on them fast. That's the nice thing about having it, you know, be a programmable thing on the side is you can, you know, add new functionality in a much quicker way. Uh, there's now improvements to the progressive light mapper, uh, including configured, configurable baked light falloff. Um, instance albedo and emissives for pre-computed lighting, additive scene light warning. Da -da 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 -da. Um, we have improvements to the shader graph. The shader graph is that new visual programming language. I covered this in the past. I've actually covered all of these topics in the past. So if you're looking for more detail on each individual feature, especially from 2018.1, uh, check my channel. I have a lot of this stuff already covered in some detail. Uh, but this new guy, uh, what's cool is shader graph now supports uh, HDRP with both PBR and unlit master nodes. Uh, so this is one of those things that sucked about it before. As previous, you could only use the shader graph with, I believe, LWP, the, the lightweight rendering pipeline. So now you can use it with the uh, HDRP as well, which is a cool improvement. Uh, as you can see here, it's basically a visual shader creator. You, if you've used uh, a shader graph in uh, Unity, Blender, Maya, you've got a pretty good idea of exactly what we're dealing with here. And there's now some new functionality here. You've got uh, vertex position nodes. Uh, master node settings uh, are now available in a small window. Uh, pr property references, names, and exposed states have been added. Uh, editable path for graphs. Uh, is font face node. Oh, that was reading fail 101, is front-faced node. Um, you can change the graph output depending on the face sign of the given fragment. Okay. Uh, gradient nodes have been added. Texture 3D and Texture 2D array nodes have been added. Texture 2D LOD node was added. And show generated code. Um, this wasn't before, so I'm not really sure what's new here. Uh, but anyways, you can now... Um, also uh, show the generated code that you're creating. Uh, this one's gonna be big for some people. It's obviously an experimental feature at this point, but they're now using the Vulkan renderer in the editor for Windows and Linux. Obviously not Mac because yeah, Mac. Uh, but uh, Vulkan support for those two editors should generally 
cause uh, things to run quite a bit faster on modern hardware at least. So it's definitely worth checking out to see how it runs for you. I've tried it on two different machines, one with a 1080, uh, one with a 970M, and in both cases it, it actually performed quite a bit better for me without any you know, real issues, but obviously experimental feature. So that's kind of up to you. Um, we got texture MIP map streaming. Uh, MIP maps are basically multi-resolution textures that are more detailed as you get closer. Uh, being able to stream them in obviously allows you to basically use them more, not have to consume as much memory to support this feature because you can basically stream them in as you need them. Um, C sharp animation jobs. Da, 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 da. So you can write your own C sharp playables to interact directly with animation data. Uh, you can also write multi threaded C sharp code to control animation stream data used by the playable graph. Cool. Uh, particle system improvements, support for eight UVs, min max and uh, min max curve and min max gradient, linear color space, emit from sprites, bake mesh, show only selected, and etc texture support. Some pretty cool stuff there. Um, in the 2D realm, we've got some new stuff here. Now this is a preview package. This isn't new. Uh, this was released a couple months ago. I already covered on it. But pixel perfect camera. This basically makes dealing with multi resolution uh, pixel art a whole lot simpler. It basically does the work for you while making your art look like the art you originally created. It's definitely worth checking out if you're interested. Again, I've already done a video on it. It's worth looking at. I'll, uh, I'll link that down below uh, along with, of course, this entire article. Uh, 2D sprite renderer sort by pivot point. And this one's kind of cool. 2D hexagonal maps have been added to the tile mapping support. Hexagonal map obviously is six-sided map. So you can see uh, here that is your typical hexagonal map. Um, if you've ever played uh, a lot of war games, uh, Catan, um, various other games like that. I think even uh, Civilization VI uses hexagons in the last version. Um, well, now they're supported in the tile map support. So if this is the art style you're going for, well, that's pretty cool. Uh, we've also now got an SVG. Um, SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. It's basically a way of defining your art in vector format. This would generally be used from an application such as Adobe Illustrator or Inkscape or Flash. Uh, it allows you to basically define graphics geometrically so that regardless of the resolution you're running at, it can be scaled up or scaled down because it's just math. It's not pixel by pixel. So there is now a preview package for SVGs um, importing, which is kind of cool. Uh, new 2D APIs have been added. This one's kind of strange. You can now um, support for using Java and CPC source files as plugins in a Unity project. So you now have the ability to add Java source files to Unity plugin project folders. These folders will be recognized as Unity plugins and will be compiled into the APK without requiring the user to build libraries separately in Android Studio. Obviously useful for Android builds that are depending on third-party Java libraries. Uh, standard asset replacement. Oh, and the Unity Hub 1.0 release is coming soon. Uh, cinematics um, improvements here. So a new camera physical properties, a new physical camera toggle enables you to reveal settings which artists and cinematographers will find instantly familiar, like standard focal length, sensor size, and lens shift properties. So basically making your camera settings more real-world-ish, uh, so you can emulate a real-world camera setup. Uh, Uni Recorder 1.0 release soon, comes with many updates, da -da -da, allows you to basically screenshot and capture image sequences, etc., from the editor. So I guess if you're putting together a trailer or a demo or a work of concept, um, you can use the recorder to do so. Uh, and a couple other things here. Uh, RackNet was removed. RackNet was the old version of networking in the 5.x branch and earlier. Uh, they now have their own built-in. I think the built-in one, I haven't done Unity networking in a long time, but I think the built-in one still has some teething pain. So this is going to burn some people. Um, and then another one that they've done, this one is officially the one where, oh, that's not the one I was looking for. Oh, I'll get to it in a second. But basically, this is the release where uh, Unity Script or JavaScript was effectively killed off. That's been coming for a while now, but they did it officially in this release. Uh, this was in the... Is this in 2018.1 or in 2018.2 beta? But anyways, high definition or high DPI monitor support is finally here. Thank God. No more blurry-ass windows. Um, I, I love this fact. This has made... Um, High DPI on Mac was always fine, but on Windows, it was hell. I've never actually experienced it on Linux, but um, it made Unity a blurry, buggy mess. Um, so nice to see that that support is finally here. It is a lot nicer to work with Unity now with high DPI support, assuming you have, say, a 4K monitor or something similar. Uh, they deprecated the .NET scripting backend. This is really going to affect pretty much nobody. Um, for the uni universal Windows platform, that being, you know... Um, I don't even know what the hell Microsoft calls this, Windows RT or whatever the 
the Windows Store version of Windows apps is. Uh, and this is also the cross-platform one. It allows you to run on the now non-existent Windows Phone, on the stripped-down version of Windows, and most importantly, on Xbox One. Um, that's the universal Windows platform. Uh, they used to be able to use Mono and the IL-2 CPP uh, runtime on the back end. Now they basically switch it so you can just use the LL-2 CPP. Uh, should ultimately result in better support. So interesting to see where that goes. I don't think it's going to really bother anyone. And we plan to end backend support for .NET scripting in 2019.1. That really doesn't mean too much to the end user because the backend is generally pretty transparent to most developers. Um, yeah, the ECS system, there's not a whole lot new here. This was released in an earlier version. ECS is pretty awesome. Burst compiler is pretty awesome. And the job system is pretty awesome. They all kind of go together. They're the future of programming in uh, Unity. Unity is pretty bloated. Right now you use mono behavior. It's kind of a god object. It's got way too much crap in it. You, you have to do way too much um, even to implement very simple um, logic nodes. And the worst part is your data and your logic are really intertwined in the current way of doing things. And that's considered generally a bad thing for code maintenance. Well, this new version basically with entity component system is looking to change it. You're going to break your systems up into entities, components, and systems. Uh, entities, uh, you're not supposed to say an entity is container of components because you're not supposed to say that, but eventually that's what everyone decides it is. A component is uh, your data and your system is what operates on your data. Once you get that kind of through your head, it's a system that works pretty well together. The nice thing is alongside of it, you can use the, the burst compiler um, is for making things a lot faster when they run. So you can do it ahead of time for standalone players. Uh, oh, even iOS. I thought that was banned. Um, so you're going to see performance improvements coming out if you use the new ECS system with the burst compiler and the job system. You also with the job system, you're supposed to be able to make your code massively parallel. So if you need to have 50 tasks running all beside each other, the job system is ideal for that. Uh, this is kind of cool. There's a managed debugger. And if we move on a little bit, there's actually a new debugger uh, plugin for Visual Studio Code. We'll get to in a second, which is kind of cool. Uh, blah. Uh, ARM 64 bit support for Android, APK splitting by architecture, nothing too exciting. There's a Google Play Instant Games plugin available now. Um, this is kind of cool. It's actually, you, go to the instant, you can go to the Google Play Store now on Android and actually evaluate a game before downloading it. Um, so you can basically, you know, hook people to your game a lot faster. But what we have to do is make a stripped down version of it so it loads pretty much instantly. But it is giving people a way to instantly jump into your game. And it, it hopefully can help result in better conversions for you in the end. Uh, here's what I was saying earlier. Uh, so basically, a while back, like this is three or four versions back, I thought they told us that they were going to kill off Unity. Oh, sorry, um, Unreal Script, which is basically JavaScript. And they have done it. Um, they have completed the deprecation of Unity Script in this release. Uh, we made this decision because of blah, blah, blah. Basically, I think what it boiled down to is Mono became free. They made Mono available for everyone. They all of a sudden could run a current version of C Sharp 7. And then suddenly this side little scripting language that they were supporting became a whole lot harder to support because you would have to replicate all of the functionality that you were getting for free for Mono. That's just my guess on this one. But basically, they got rid of it. Uh, so if you are a Unity developer, the writing's been on the wall for a while. Uh, but they are providing a Unity script to C-Sharp automatic conversion tool. Those always work exceptionally well. But if you're interested, it is available for download right there. And as I mentioned just a few moments ago, Visual Studio Code, which is personally my favorite scripting editor of all of them out there, a script editor, I mean, uh, and it's nicely cross-platform. So if you're looking for a solution for C-Sharp scripting on um, Windows or Mac or Linux, it is probably the perfect choice. And it got even better because there is now a Visual Studio Code debugger for Unity extension available. Oh, and there's the magic word in preview. Um, but yeah, so if you want to develop your or debug your code directly from C, um, from Visual Studio Code, that is a nice new feature. And HoloLens, is anyone actually using HoloLens? I'll kind of gloss over that. And that's about the extent of the new features and functionality. Again, I am skimming over this. I will throw this link down below, but I gave you the gist of it. And again, as I said, right off the hop, this release, the 2018.2 release, is pretty much entirely about improving on 2018.1. The new features, the new um, sales point, the magic stuff was all added in 2018.1 in a very early version. With 2018.2, it's all becoming much more usable, such as, you know, you can now use the new shader tool with the high def pipeline, which is, you know, kind of nice. Uh, and again, I love the fact to see this uh, Visual Studio Code debugging support. And 
you know, basically across the board. It's just a bunch of uh, improvements, nice functionality. And you can't just keep adding stuff without improving the existing stuff or you're just going to have a buggy beta mess forever. So this is the kind of release we do need to see. Plus, there's some cool new stuff in there. There's the new hexagonal 2D maps. That looks pretty sweet. Uh, the new uh, physical cameras that uh, for the cinema machine that is definitely going to appeal to a certain uh, demographic. But, uh, you know, let me know in the comments down below what's got you excited about this release or do you just not care? All right, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.